Ok. Ok, great. Enrique Corcuera. I get to say that name very often, and it's never been my chance to be able to say to Enrique Corcuera, welcome to the joy of paddle. I speak much Thank about you. the origin of paddle. I've had my father on, who played on your father's court. I've had Nelly Granda, the son of jean uh, playing on your court. And now I have the great privilege to have the son of the founder of Enrique Corcuera and Viviana, who were the beginners. So I often ask my guests, what's their route to paddle? Um, let's say that your route is just a tad bit different from everybody else's. Enrique, tell us about your beginnings of, of playing paddle and being on the mythical, the wonderful um, initial court that your father and mother built. Well, uh, when I was born, paddle was already five, six years old. So I, I remember uh, the court was in my house. So I remember playing at four or five years old uh, with my father and his friends. So for me, it was in, uh, part of my life. It, it, it never came to me. It was there always. That's right. And and so you um, you got to play on this court that what, what we always understood was it, it, it was because you didn't have enough space at that house for a typical tennis court. But what I've understood is that actually the idea of having a game in your backyard existed, well, not in yours specifically because you're you know, younger, but in your father and mother's backyard started way before in the 50s. Can you take us through how it, it you know, what were the original experiment experiences and experiment experiments that were tried until you get to the final 1969 20 by 10? Yes, of course. Uh... My father had a sugar cane a, a ranch, I would call them haciendas. And in there he had a, he built a front on court. And, and one day he decided to play a, the, the other player, but against each other like, uh, like tennis. So he put a net in the middle of the front on court and they started playing with tennis rackets and, and tennis balls. And he liked the idea of using the wall with the frontal rules of uh, the, the rebound. And then when he saw that it was a lot of fun to play tennis with the with the back wall and with the but, side. But wall. of course, in this case, there's only one wall because front on you play against one wall, right? No, they, uh, you play against one wall, but it has two walls. But in the, so they could play with the both walls. So they had three walls. They didn't have the the left wall. So so the only if if they the the rule was you can only play with the back wall. And and he he played like that for a few years, but th there he got the idea. And then there was a sport uh, called paddle tennis, uh, an American sport. Platform uh, paddle. Platform paddle. And from then, he saw that, and, he, and with his permits with the wall, when he had, when he got the house in Acapulco, it wasn't that big to build his his front on. So he decided to mix the two. He mixed them, and he started experimenting with with his friends and family. And you were one of the first victims I heard, <laughs> and and then he got it. He he got something fun. And that was 1969, and by 1980 he got the the rules and the the rule book. He he draw draw it up. He made it. The famous Corquera paddle rules, which my yeah. father ha had a copy of, but for some reason somehow I can't locate it anymore. So. I, I I would love to get an, an original copy again. I've been looking. I've been scouring eBay to see if there's one that will become available again. I get you one. Oh, that would be beautiful. So the the interesting thing about the game now today, twenty by ten, it's it is quite different in that you have the the four meter wool walls and the the the, the grill um, the netting that's around compared to what it was at the very beginning. 
which is as I understand it. And some of the rules, as I understand it, Nali uh, told me, was that some of the, you, you would go to your friends who built similar b- games because they so enjoyed your father's version that they started creating their own little uh, paddle games. But the rules were different in different houses. And, and one of the rules that I used to hear was that since the, the walls were only three meters long and it was a tennis ball, if you hit the ball out, which was so much easier to do, you lose the point as opposed to today where it's sort of you win the point, basically, if you can manage to hit it out. I was wondering if, if you could qualify that story. And then the other one is tell us any other rules that have changed since the famous Corquera rules book. Well, yes, there were like 10 courts in Las Brisas in Acapulco, but they all had a, they have the 20 by 10. They all respected that. And, but the, some side walls were smaller, some back walls were higher, some were small. Some, some, some houses decided that if you, if the ball got out of the court, it was bad. And particularly because it was also very expensive to buy uh, tennis balls in Acapulco in, in the 70s, in the 80s. And uh, they were not easy to get. So we took care of them. And so, yes, that is true. Uh, and every house had its own particular rule. Like my side, this side wall is good. That one is uh, it's not good because we have a a, a garden over there, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Ruin the roses. Exactly. So that is true. And yes, so if you if you if you hit it very hard and you got it out of the court, you lose the point. Yes. Hmm. And I also understand your father at the beginning, one of the rules is when you serve underhand, uh, <clears throat> he preferred it not to be bouncing into the sidewall as in or the glass where we where now it's it is. Yes, the, the they were the players were not very advanced because they, they were learning, no, it was a new game. So playing against the sidewall on the serve was difficult. So they decided that it has to hit the back wall first. Or, or not at all, but the, the sidewall was considered a fault. And that is the only difference between my paddle Corquera and the, the new paddle is the, the serve. The, uh, the, the sidewall is not, it was not permitted by my father. Mm-hmm. I love those little details, Enrique. And um, so today, one of the things I understand from having listened is that your father had a patent on the game. Tell us about that and where we are with the patent. Uh, when uh, the, when the sport started to to to, co- to take off in Spain and in Argentina, and they started uh, to talk who invented it, and my father wanted to 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 know that, but he wanted everybody to know the truth. So he got a very good friend of him, uh, a notary called. Soto Borja, Ignacio Soto Borja. And what should we do? Well, we have the rule book and we have the pictures that you are were the first. So let's patent all those things and let's do the International Paddle Federation. And that's what they did. And it was difficult at the beginning because you have to put their the Argentinians and the Spaniards together and and make and make them agree on some rules and 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 then the new government body and the rule book and etc. But after some lobbying, we were able to do it thanks to Nacho Soto Borja and uh, the International Power Federation was born and the Spanish Federation, Argentina Federation. So concretely, you get recognition for for the invention of the game, the origin of it, which is beautiful. And to what extent is there a patent and that you you can how somehow participate in the something that you began? Is that is there any other? I mean, I know you're involved with Copa, which is very interesting. I want to hear about that. But is there any other benefit to you for having invented paddle? We had another patent with the glass walls. And that patent lasted 10 years. But my father took the decision that he wanted to make no money of it. Hmm. And... It was the most important thing was for the sport to grow and not to make money of it. And 
So he very altruistically decided uh, never to make money with uh, with that part of the of the game. Well, it's been a gift to the world. Is is what I talk about, and Enrique. When I I've been playing obviously uh, since 1974 myself, and um, uh, when I say there are five rules to paddle, but rule number one is the most important, and rule number one is have fun. I agree. <laughs> I figured you would. So let's uh, talk about what your involvement is in paddle, because I understand you're quite active. Uh, in paddle with Copa, the Corcuera paddle, as I understand, C O P A paddle. So tell us what you're doing in paddle. Well, we have a brand, uh, some uh, friends and family members, and it's called Corcuera Paddle Copa. And we make, uh, we have a clothing line and rackets, balls, and and I can send you a brochure so you you can show it. And we we started two years ago and we're doing pretty well. We're in Mexico and now we're moving internationally. And, nice. And the idea is every product has a signature of my father and uh, the, the story of the game and like going, we call it going back to the beginning. It, it smells like René Lacoste for me. Exactly. That was the idea. Yes. Very classic. Because all the paddle clothing and it is very colorful and it's more like a football or like something Nadal or Alcaraz would, would wear. <laughs> and we we have no there is no paddle clothing that is like Lacoste or like right. the original. When you play in the seventies with my father, they dress in white. No, they they didn't play uh, with colorful shirts. Now those were the classic days, in any case. And um, one of the things that was really interesting to me as I've been researching before this call was the, the growth in Argentina. I had always assumed that the, the growth, which was monumental in Argentina, was related to your mom. But it's not like it just sort of happens naturally. The, you, you've got to be a little intentional to get it to have. I mean, as I understand, it, there were 30,000 courts in Argentina at one point. So it, 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 was, it was growing like mushrooms back in the 80s, right? Or maybe late 70s and 80s. Do you have any any more understanding of how it got so popular in Argentina? Was was it sort of, you know, Maradona or, the, or whoever was the Argentine footballer of the day? What was it that, that made it so popular so early, much even more popular than Spain? Uh, well, yeah. How it, it grew so fast, I'm not sure. What I know is that they played on a on the cement court and in the 80s it was it was having a boom but then it had a big decline because playing on cement and concrete without uh, the, the artificial glass hurts your knees so many people started suffering a knee pain so they had to rebuild all the courts with grass to to, to with uh, according to the new regulations and that fixed the problem but it, it was a very big boom. Argentina is a, a country they love tennis, and and they and they do a lot of sports. They are very very good at it. Very cultural sports. They love to, to play everything. So when they discovered they they could play tennis in a small court, that it was more well, my opinion, more for than tennis and easier, and you can play four. Eight, they they went crazy about it. Yes. Well, Many that is, it's still the case. To build small, small courts and, and well, in a, in a tennis court, you can put three paddle courts. And also that's also an advantage. No doubt. Well, Los Argentinos uh, Masculinos uh, son, uh, are the uh, current world champions, right? The men's version. So there's all, they're always Argentinians and Spaniards. That's basically, they rule the roost still. We're still waiting for some Mexicans, by the way. I have I play with one of my favorite Mexican players, a guy called um, Gabo Loredo, who's based in Sweden. Uh, so he always gave me a little bit of the taste of paddle in Mexico, but uh, waiting for more. So Copa is your, is your uh, let's say, the commercial side of what you're up to and bring that. And I can't wait to find some Copa, Copa merchandise. But what about you? You're playing, you play ten, you play paddle. And, and you've, you, I mean, have lived your life through the evolution of paddle. It is 
presumably always been part of your life. How, how have you developed your game? I mean, and how would you describe the change in the game? It's more offensive. Um, I play uh, very well in the back of the court because at the beginning we play a lot in the back. Some One player in the back, one player in the front. So I'm, I'm really good at the rebounds in the back. But the ex tennis players are really good at the at the net, so that's where I mostly in the overhead and in the net. That's where I I'm good, but not excellent in the back. I'm really good. Mm, you're a defender. I love to defend personally as well. Uh, yeah, one of the questions, defend. one of the questions I like to ask are: What sort of an animal are you on the tennis court? How what, how would you describe Enrique the uh, the paddle player as an animal? I like to be very stable, not not run a lot. Uh, so I know it would be something like um, a tiger or something like that. Mm -hmm. Still pouncing around, and yeah. uh, and so what's your favorite shot? My favorite shot is the uh, from the uh, the rebound from the back wall uh, uh, and hit it back hard, like la bajada. La one, bajada one, is very short, yes. The one that's about, uh, up high off the back, I say it in English just to like, describe it. For those yeah. who don't just know all the Spanish terms yet, working on it. And uh, what about the Pro Tour? Do you watch the Pro Tour a lot? Yeah, I watch some of the Pro Tour, and well, this year is, is changing. We have a new, uh, we have a new tournaments, and uh, I think it's doing great. Uh, and I also go to see them live because I have, uh, when they play in Mexico, I put my, my store, my Copa store on the tournament. So I, well, I'm, I'm very happy because I'm on, in all the matches watching them. And then I go outside and, and sell my merchandise and talk to everyone about the creation of paddle and et cetera, et cetera. Just like we're doing now. And I, I have to imagine your, do you do, you do Instagram? Uh, um, no, everything that has to do with paddle, I, I do it via the Copa website or, and I interviews and etc. No, I don't use uh, my, my personal Instagram for, for much of that. I was just wondering if yours is like mine, my personal Instagram. I have a joy of paddle Instagram, but my personal one is just one off to the other. Paddle points, paddle points, paddle points, which I love, by the way. It doesn't, doesn't no, see but, but I want to start. I agree with you. I, I want to buy one of those cameras you can put on the back of the court mm -hmm. to report some points. It's a good idea. There's the, there are a bunch of them. One of them I love is, is you get you once you've seen a good when you've done a good point, you run over and you punch and it captures the last 45 seconds. And then it because it, it films it from several angles, but it doesn't retain all of them. So only the good points you go over, capture it. And I, I don't remember, I don't know what the tech is, but lots of good ways to do that. Because a lot of points aren't quite as great as the pro paddle players. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a good idea. You only record the last 45, the last point you want. You don't want to look, everyone looking at the bad points. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Send me, the, send me the information about that. I would need to buy one. Uh, it's called Push It. I will send it to you. And uh, that's, a, that's a great one. And then, so you, those... Uh, that you probably met some of them, but who are your favorite pro players to watch? Uh, is Tupasu. Is, is my Argentinian. Favorite, the Argentinian. He moves like a gazelle, like he's very fast, beautiful style, uh, and without hitting the ball so hard, just a lot of control and positioning. So it's, it's, it's one of the crowd's favorite, and it's also my, my favorite. Yeah, his rulo is just spectacular. I mean, he's lots of shots, right? But such exactly. a great mover. How about amongst the yeah. women? Um, Salazar or uh, Las Gemelas, the Tomic. Uh, I like I like them. Yes, I I, I recommend them um, to to learn. Like the, the the level of the women is more, is similar to my level, a lot more similar. So to, uh, I prefer to watch the women to, to learn to new tactics and etc. And I watch the women more carefully in that sense. The men, I prefer to watch them for the spectacle, but I cannot imitate what they do. I cannot go out of the court, etc. 
but with the women, uh, it's better for me to learn. That is such a great insight, Enrique. I absolutely agree with you. I, I think that it's more realistic for us. The pace, I mean, it's not that they don't play incredible paddle and all that, but there's, you, it's something we can perhaps, especially as we move on in age, uh, relate to it and the slower. And the Jamelas, the twins, of course, are, are great. The, the idea of that complementarity of the team as well, watching them communicate so well and, and get it all together on the, on the court. Yeah, because they, they, are, they, they hit the ball up harder than me, obviously, but they are not so offensive and they don't have those weapons, you not know, like the men have. That from any angle of the court, they can probably hit it out. Yeah. Uh, so they, they have to get in position. Yeah, so the, 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 um, like to watch how they do it. That's right. The portress that the LeBron or Galan can do from the very back or Tapia, the back of the court. I mean, crazy, right? Yeah. It's, it's hard to imagine. I, uh, you've played paddle a long time and uh, paddle is about having fun. What about if you have in your past a uh, story about the f- most fun experience you've ever had on a paddle court or one that comes to mind anyway? Playing with my father was a lot of fun. And before he had the rule book, he used to change the rules at his convenience. Ah, So when we were playing with him and the famous Tula Bowl, when it's a little up or a little down, he decided when it was good or bad because he invented the game. So <laughs> <laughs> that was always a lot of fun discussing, discussing, everybody discussing with him. And in the end, I invented it. I, I decided it was good. Yeah, Cariate. Always, I, always is beneficial. Well, it sounds very much like Henry VIII, um, who who also changed the rules of real tennis to favor him, right? I didn't knew that. Ah, well, that's exactly like that. Exactly. And who's going to disagree with a king of paddle? Exactly. Um, that's that's wonderful. What about? And I think it's true of all sports in some degree, but paddle for you, Enrique, in your life. What sort of lessons has paddle brought to you in your regular life? Paddle get gives me the discipline of working out, hmm. and uh, it was very very important in life. And you don't have to go to the gym. And I've tried all different sports, but paddle is more addictive, and it's a good addiction, in my opinion. I mean, I want to play every day, and I feel incomplete when I don't play. And but it's good for your body, it's good for you. So that's the the main benefit is physically. I'm thin, I'm I'm in shape, and, and thanks to it, I don't have to do anything else but play paddle uh, four or five times a week. And I love it, and I have a lot of friends inviting me and doing tournaments and different uh, the, meeting new people. It's very social, and so I really like it. I mean, if if I had, if my father hadn't invented it, I would play it anyway. I, I really love it. So I'm going to tell you, Enrique, my five rules. I told you, you know, rule number one is have fun. Rule number two is don't get injured because then we can't have fun. Rule number three is try to play well because why not? Rule number four is, in order, try to win. And then there's a, then I add a rule number five. You mentioned social rule number five. What's rule number five? You have to have a beer afternoon after the game. Oh yeah. It's a good idea. And um, the weekends I do on uh, the week. Sometimes I don't, uh, but yes, it's a great idea. I, I, I will start practicing it. <laughs> Excellent. I'm not imposing, but what I will do is when I come and when we finally play together, Enrique, we will have a good old social time as well as a good old battle on the court. So uh, last question for you, Enrique, what about the future of paddle? How do you, from your standpoint, consider the future of paddle? What countries do you see standing out? Where is it going? Is it going to be more than football, less than football? Well, the future right now is in Mexico, we have to, it is growing at the right pace very fast. But we need a professional players that can compete with the best. And we are far from that. We, we were just starting with the juniors to get them at the level. So we are very involved in that. And the first, and we have to penetrate the, the American market. The Americans, 
they're starting to play, especially in the South uh, states like Texas uh, and California, Florida. And but there are some people playing in, in New York area, and a lot of clubs are three clubs already exist there. So yes, the American market is very important, and we have a the, the little problem with this game called pickle that, that they are playing pickle like. The Americans they don't like rugby. They, they invent the American football. They they don't like cricket, or they invent baseball. Baseball. They don't. They, they don't. To... They take football, which is a game played with the feet, and they play it with the hands. <laughs> yeah, or I think it's rugby. I think they 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 took rugby and and made it yeah. football. I, I don't know, but the, it's only play on their country, and. I have to. I I hope that paddle is like tennis in the U.S. That is very popular and and it's a world sport that everybody plays. And they don't have because pickle is not going to move beyond the the Americans. And it's a game. It's not a sport. And uh, so we, so that's the 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 entering the American market is the most important thing in the next decade for for paddle, mm. in my opinion. Uh, I I uh, I don't know nothing about Asia. I haven't mm. studied the, the situation. It's uh, too far away from me. Yeah, just beginning. But I do want to give a little hat tip to my other two Mexican uh, chums, Aldo, who uh, owns the a big club in Cancun, and uh, Wilson Arceo, a wonderful coach. Highly recommend it him in Merida. So uh, with that, uh, Enrique, it's uh, been great to have you on the show. I feel really honored to have been able to meet you. Thank you for taking some time to talk about what is clearly a common passion. What's the last word you'd like to say uh, to the joy of paddle guests, hosts? Well, thank you for having me. Play paddle, try it. Just take one class in the in the second class, the second hour, you're gonna be hooked. It's fun, it's it's easy, and it's easy to start. But then you can go. It has a lot of challenges to become good at it. But uh, it's the different with playing tennis or squash is that at the beginning you suffer, in in or you're not gonna suffer in, in the, the first after the first hour. You're not suffering anymore. You are having fun. So try it. Just try it. The That's risk well. is you'll be addicted. Yes. Enrique, muchas gracias. Thank you. Gracias a ustedes. Thank you for listening to me and taking the time to, to hear this story. It's been our pleasure. Hmm?